In this video, I'll be showing you how to see colours in chestnut coloured fur and which coloured pencil selection I would use. Hi everyone, welcome to this video where we're going to be looking a little bit more closely at the pencil choices that I would make if I was portraying chestnut fur. We've already done white fur we were in, and black fur, so we're going to look at chestnut fur. Now I've got a bit of a range of images um, and I think I'm going to break it down possibly into two videos. So we've got some that are very much like this setter at the top left and the spaniel in the middle um, that fall into the real reddish chestnut colour and then if you look at this other spaniel here on the right hand side you can see that it falls into more of an apricot colour it's so much paler so I think in this video we're going to cover the brighter tones so the brighter reds and oranges and we'll do a second video that breaks down this, this one here falls somewhere between it's very close to a retriever but it's not golden as such it is much more in the orangey shades, ochery shades. So we're going to focus on the red colours today. So let's have a look. Um, what we're going to be doing, I've got two different types of pencils that I'll be quoting to you. Mainly Faber-Castell polychromos. Now um, the only thing with the Faber-Castell the polychromos is I find there's a huge gap in their range of um, browns and reds. So I find I use my Kaput Morton for my warm reds and my Kaput Morton violets for my darker, coldish, bluish reds. Um, I'll also use something like the Burnt Sienna, um, a couple of my ochres, and then of course I'll use my Cinnamon. I'm not sure what Cinnamon is on the chart. I've got Dark Flesh, Medium Flesh, here about Cinnamon. I use very much my Cinnamon and also some of the, if it's very reddish, I'll use some of the Venetian Red. Um, possibly Indian red as well in there, but cinnamon is definitely one of my blending um, and softeners for my reddish tones in the Faber-Castell range. Now, we'll also be using, looking at um, the Pablos. Now, I use the Pablos, and I think the Pablos, the Carandash Pablos, do tie in the colours as well as if it's, so if you've got a luminance, you can tie them in there. The Pablos seem to fill in all those lovely reds and browns that are missing on the Polychromos range. So here I've got some real favourites anyway that I pull in. Um, their cinnamon and things like that are slightly different. The hazel, um, we'll use those a lot in like the fox, so the more orangey tones, and we'll use that in the more apricot um, looking dogs. But for the reddish tones, one of my favourite colours nowadays is the russet. And I know you get that in Luminance as well as the Pablos. Their Burnt Sienna's got a different tone. Um, their Chestnut. And also, they've got just one that's called Brown. <laughs> um, let me just pull up just the Brown. It doesn't show up as well on the screen here, the Brown. Now in here, the Brown looks quite brown. But it is actually a lovely reddish brown. So if you're using Russet, you can... Um, pull in the brown as well and it does give a lovely transition from your um, reddish tones through into your darkish browns and I also love the mahogany and again that's shown up quite true um, but you see it's where it's right next to russet on the the color chart as well so those colors work really well together so that is the um, our color charts so let me just pull down now um, some of our images and we're going to go through just a few of these here. So this dog up here, first of all, just to show you again, I know I've done it on the white fur video. This shows you a really good example of how the same dog can look completely different in two different lights. So here we go. This is taken outside, I'd imagine on quite a brightish day lots and lots of light in there. Again, I haven't edited these photos. Um, beautiful colours in here. So what we're going to do is just zoom in. I'm going to save this one for more of the, um, for looking at, it's more of the apricot dog. 
um, but I just wanted to zoom in here just to show you the lovely range of the colours because we, we do have lap over colours because I can see the Kaput Autumn Violet in through here but there's lots more in here of your Burnt Ochres um, there's even some pinkish tones so I can see magenta and everything anyway, we'll come back to this one on the um, apricot video but that's the dog in daylight um, and here is the dog indoors um, and you can just see the complete difference in colour so if you are doing a commission and you get just ask for lots of reference photos and then ask the client from those photos which one matches the coloration of the dog best um, and go with that one for the color you might be using one for the pose one for the fur direction and one for the coloration but it's good to have a good range and that is why the same dog completely different colors and you want to get it right so let's start with which i think is the reddish of the dogs here this one here this is classic this is a setter um, this is stunning um, in the colours, the red colours, and also coming up through the mahoganies. So let's zoom in. This is what you want to do. Forget that it's a dog. Forget that it's fur. Forget that you're looking for exact colours. All of the colours need to mix and blend, be layered, and transition from darks to lights. So you're looking for pretty much all of those undertones as well. So let's zoom in here. First of all, let's go down and look at this beautiful rich coat i know it's a little bit out of focus there okay so coming in here polychromos this is where you where you'd use your bluish kaput mortem violet you'd also bring in some dark indigo your bright orangey flecks here i would also probably go for my sanguine um again i can see dark indigo flecks in through here as well more kaput, more kaput mortem violet more sanguine now if you're going to look across to some of your pablos again you can start to pull in that lovely russet color in through here as well um, and that brown because the brown is a deep reddish brown as well it's slightly different to the put molten violet and then for laying over the top um you'll be using like your cinnamon as a softener you've got some Got some coolish greys in here, so like a cool grey two or three in through here. So look at your different highlights because they're going to show up as different. Um, as I say, that's crazy. Different highlights. So you might be using a cool grey in one area, a warm grey in another, an ivory in another, and um, sometimes even um, light flesh in another. So let's just come up over the nose. And you can see here we've got some of those red tones that match down here but up here we're coming much more into the ochre areas so again we've got our burnt ochre and our sanguine the sanguine is the brightest of the orange burnt ochre is slightly softer we've got the kaput mortem violet here in around the eyes down through here you can also bring in some more of your dark indigo just to mix in with your kaput mortem violet to darken up places some of your Van Dyke brown um, or even your dark sepia mixed in with some of your russet or your Kaput Mortem, Kaput Mortem Violet through here. Now as it warms up in places you can switch from your Kaput Mortem Violet to some of your Kaput Mortem. The Kaput Mortem is a little bit warmer so it's more of a warmer reddish tone whereas the Kaput Mortem Violet like it says it's got violet in it, it's more of a cooler bluish tone. So here I'd be using some greys over the top um, for my softeners, some nougat as well. So nougat make, makes a lovely softener and blender. Ivory here, also cinnamon, um, possibly no, no cream. But say more of your burnt ochre and there is actually a lovely apricot in the, um, the Pablo's range. So the apricot would make a lovely softener as well. Um, let's come up through here. Little touches here as well in the Pablo's range of the, their Venetian red. It's absolutely gorgeous. And the mahogany. The mahogany is more pinky, as is the Venetian red. It's much more. The cinnamon is, is very um, peachy pink. Great softener. But the, uh, the Venetian red um, in the Pablo's is slightly more orangey. 
So the cinnamon's more pinky, the um, Venetian red in the Pablo's is more orangey. So just think about your transitions. So let's have a look. Yep, you've got warm greys up through here, through the top. Warm greys, few cool greys, cold grey ones, only for your last layers. Um, your dark shadow underneath. You'll be popping some black in here as well, so mix some of your black into those super, super dark areas. And again, you've got all the put molten violet around here, some indigo. I can see flashes though of mauve as well. So, um, so some of like your purple shade over the top of some of your real um, darkish red tones, and then so many colours on this dog. As you come through to the ear, this touches back onto the apricot colours. So in your um, Pablo's range, or in your in your Polychromas range, you'll be using some burnt ochre, some cinnamon, um, softening it with some of your warm greys and your ivory. But I would switch over and mix in some of my um, Pablo's, and this is where I'd use some of those orangey tones I said about. So that they're Venetian red, um, the mahogany here for the slightly darker, the Venetian red for the softer. Um, stay away from the cinnamon on here because it's not as pink, it's much more orangey and peachy. And then as you come down here you can pop some of the russet in through here, some russet down through here as well, and then it starts to blend back out into that lovely kaput mortem violet. More down here, more of the russet, some of your sanguine again. Um, here you've got touches again of your pinky, so you can bring the cinnamon back here. And here's warm grey and your ivory. So let's go on to the next picture now. Let's tap back out of that one. Okay, so you'll know this one is mock-up up. So if you look here, this one's very much true with all those beautiful reds. Mockup up has got some of those reds running through it. Um, if you've done the mockup up tutorial, obviously I did that one using Faber Castell, the watercolor pencils, um, wet and dry. If I chose to do it again, obviously I would use a mix of the polychromos and um, all the albaturas as a base, and then some of my bringing some of my Pablos over the top. So this one's much more of the orangey shades. So again, here, this darker orange is more of a sanguine. Um, you've got mauve running through here, dark indigo, and Van Dyke brown. Mixing in um, with some of the Kaput Mortem here, Kaput Mortem Violet, sorry, for your darks. So it's not about putting down a flat colour. You don't just put down Kaput Mortem Violet. You look in there and you put in, mix it with some dark indigo, a touch of black, because within that patch there of dark, you've got within it again smaller patches, let me just see if I can zoom in a little bit more, smaller patches again, so you've got in there, that, that little centre there is really dark, this bit on top has just had a bit of red glazed over the top, so again I'd now bring in some of the russet over the top of my dark, um, let's zoom out a tiny bit, same as under here, this really dark area. Don't be scared to put some black in there. Go in with your dark indigo, go in with your put mortem violet, but go in there with some black underneath and blend and mix to make it a dark... That's how you make your shades. You add black to make your shades and you add white to make... Um, to lift up the tones. So don't be afraid, but I'd avoid using white I'd more like to say use some of those lights I said about earlier. Light flesh for any pinkish tones, ivory for any warm creamish tones, warm grey for any muddy creamish tones, um, cool greys for those real, I'm more on a black dog. I'm not exactly sure if there's any cool grey on here. I'm just going to have a quick flick round. No, I'd be using lots of ivory. So sanguine, burnt ochre, Van Dyke brown, ivory over the top. Warm grey, maybe mix a tiny bit of dark sepia in there for my shadow and then put a warm grey over the top. Um, now there is some mauve mixing in with Kaput Mortem Violet down through here. Some russet up through here again. Touches of the sanguine for the brightest of the orange. Cinnamon around the eye. 
um, burnt ochre. Again, now we're touching over into those orangey shades in the Pablos as well, so your hazel can come in here. Um, cinnamon for these highlights here and a touch of light flesh and some warm grey. I hope I'm not going too fast, but it's just about looking. You look at this, it's not one or two or even three colours or shades. It's loads. <laughs> and the more you put in there, the more depth and the more detail you get. So you come then from these oranges off down into this darker fur area of the body. If you look in here, look at these purpley shades. So you've got mauve going into dark indigo, coming out with flashes of sanguine, touches of the Pablo Venetian red through here as well. Um, lots of dark indigo in those shadows down through here and could put more some violet for the more reddish shadows further up. So that's going to be one with our more blondy apricot dogs. The same with this one. It's still a little bit more of the orangey tones. Okay, so let's come back. Okay, we're going to do this one. Um, it's actually quite a famous horse. Well, it's definitely a famous dressage rider there that I managed to get a nice photo of. So this looks quite flat tone, you know, sort of orange, orangey shade so you might go okay sanguine sanguine a little bit of dark a little bit of light so let's come into it yep so use that sanguine as your main choice of color but then you're going to be mixing it up with some touches of the russet um some touches of kaput mortem that's your more reddish tone um some more bits of dark sepia warm gray around those eyes ivory for some of the highlights and you can be mix and blend mix and blend there's reds coming down through here some more kaput mortem van dyke brown in for some of these shadows you can even put in a touch of dark indigo and mix that with your van dyke brown just to get it a little bit there's bluey shades down through here and also mauve see the purple see this lovely pinky purple you can go magenta or the mauve Mauve is darker purple, magenta is more of that pink, and the magenta will set off the orangey brown beautifully. Now up here, rather than going in with one highlight, you've got that lovely apricot in the um, Pablo range, the apricot, ivory in the polychromos range, or cream in the Pablos. Um, and then you've got some warm grey up through here, so warm grey one, two, and three up through here and then it comes back up into some of your Kaput Mortem but it's not just flat Kaput Mortem, it's a blend of Kaput Mortem touch of burnt ochre and some warm grey possibly a little bit of ivory as well and then lovely, I know we should go off into a different colour but look at these dark indigos up through those black knots okay so it's all about transitioning as well that's why I colour block so look at a great big chunk of colour choose the main basis which is going to be your sanguine color that block in and then start to mix and blend other tones and shades and colors on the top okay okay let's have a look at the ears on this beautiful beautiful dog that i met at a dog show many years ago um it's again very much the orangey tones up over the forehead. So going back to our polychromos, we've got our sanguine for the brightest orange, our burnt ochre, our ivories, our warm greys, dark sepia underneath here, touches of dark sepia where you've got the white transitioning into the chestnut. Again, use some of the chestnut in the um, Pablo's range. And then we come down through here, we start to pop in some reds. It's not quite russet. So look at your burnt ochre, flashes of sanguine. Um, could put mortem. So mainly could put mortem from your darker tones. Let's zoom in again. And if you can't see, just zoom in more. Okay, so I'd come in here with dark sepia maybe a little touch of dark indigo but mainly dark sepia in the polychromos range and then into the ear i'd be using kaput mortem little tiny hints of the um 
the russets, but I'd be mixing it with burnt ochre to soften it. And my darker shadows, let's come down here. Still could put mortem with touches of mahogany from the Pablo's range up through here as well. More, slightly more of a pinky orange. And also that Venetian red. Um, Venetian red in the polychromos or the Pablo's range. Coming down into these shadows, let's have a look. These are gorgeous. So here the ear is wet. So you can be mixing your darkest browns, so either a walnut brown, a Van Dyke brown, with touches of dark indigo. If they don't go quite dark enough, add in a tiny touch of the black, um, but only a tiny touch to really push the values. Um, but absolutely gorgeous colours in those ears. I think that, to be honest, that ear would make a lovely subject all of its own. So what else have we got? Okay, this was a different one again. And if you see any of your photos on here and they don't get covered, don't worry. I'm going to be doing a live stream this weekend. Where I'll be going and looking at all of these a lot more. Okay, so lots of tones and different shades on this doggy. So starting from this left hand side, it's reddish brown. So look at your russet, look at that brown, just you know, the brown in the Pablo's range as well, because it is a slightly reddish brown. And then we come across into Polychromos Burnt Ochre, um, Van Dyke Brown, Cinnamon up around the nose, Cinnamon there blending across into the warm grey, but over the top of some of your ochre. Um, lovely Venetian Red around the mouth there on that lip and then we're coming up into some of our brownish reddish tones so in here I'd be going in with Kaput Mortem mixed with um, Walnut Brown touches of dark indigo in there um, cinnamon some of the Pablo Venetian Red um, some light flesh in here for your real light areas Bring in Nougat as well. Nougat is a lovely softener. Nougat will just soften these transitions from that cheek patch out into this more ivory warm grey one and two here. Um, such as burnt ochre, maybe a little bit of sanguine in there. Again, mix and blend and see. It all depends as well on what colour support you're using. Um, that can aid you or it can make you work harder. So I could put Morton up across the top here, some of that Pablo Mahogany, um, Ivory, Warm Grey over the top, and then coming out into this ear, use some of the colours that you mixed into the darks here, but I would actually pop in a tiny bit of Caput Morton Violet, not a huge amount, but just mix some in with your black in that darkest shadow. Um, oh, again, it's absolutely stunning fur on this one. So, I'm going to do one more. Let's have a look. This horse is very similar to this one. Oh, let's go for this one. This one, let's have a look. Zoom in a bit more. Okay, much more of your oranges through here then, so don't be scared. So get in there with that sanguine. Um, the burnt ochre. The um, chestnuts. Um your hazel, really colour block all over and then start to come in with just hints, again squint your eyes just to look at those tones, dark sepia around here, nougat for your lightning area, lighter areas to blend, ivory, some cream even from the polychromas because that's a slightly more yellowish tone, um, cinnamon down here as your softener, Warm grey as well as it transitions out into more of the cream over here. Um, oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Now coming over here, it gets even brighter. So again, you've got the sanguine, um, some of the brown, some of the russet, um, and some of the um, Venetian red and apricot for lightning down here along with a little bit of the ivory and cream. It's absolutely gorgeous colours. And again, I can see around that muzzle, lots of nougat to soften, and possibly some warm grey two and three. 
um, and ivory up over here. It's all about the, using your different, say four or five different lightener lighteners. So, like I mentioned before, your light flesh, your warm greys, your cool greys, your nougat, your cinnamon. Um, those will all, and your ivory and cream. Those will all give such a variation in um, your light lighter areas. Um, and same with your darks, if you vary them. If you only use one colour or one light, so one ivory, it just your drawing just remains quite flat. The more colours, the more shades, the more tones you can get in there, the deeper and richer the value um, of your piece. So I hope that has covered some of the colours um, that you can see in some of these images. Um, oh, we didn't do this one, did we? Should we do this one quickly? Yeah, let's do this one quickly. This is quite brown, um, but that chocolatey face has just got so much dark indigo mauve. The purple shades in through this one is absolutely stunning. Once you start seeing it, so if you mix with um, your dark walnut brown, if you mix mauve and kaput mortem and kaput mortem violet, dark indigo again through here, absolutely stunning. But then as you come up over the top, it comes out into some of those reddish oranges tones. So again, you've got lots of the burnt ochre, touches of sanguine up over here. And then as you come down through the ear, it's away from that backlight. In here is so much warm grey, and also you've got more of like a purplish shade up running up through here. Um, but your warm greys mixed with the purplish shade, and some of your Payne's grey in here for some of your darker areas as well. Again, absolutely stunning colours. This one's available to you on Patreon as well. It's one of the early reference photos that I did put out. So, we're going to leave it there. I will do the apricot video as well. Um, so I might put a call out for ginger cats as well. So we'll try and tie in the apricots with the gingers. Um, so look out for that video coming. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube and you haven't subscribed, please do take a second just to hit the button at the bottom. And if you've learned something from the video, please do give it a thumbs up on YouTube. It all helps me. Um, if you haven't got Polychromas or Pablos, um, don't forget that you can um, purchase Karen Hull's amazing color conversion charts, um, either as physical hard copies or as digital downloads from her website and I do have an affiliate link and if you're on Patreon you do get a good discount as well using a link, um, a discount code that Karen has kindly provided us with and I'll put the details in the post. Um, so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon for another colour video.